Hello and welcome to my video series on how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLIR. This is Samir, your host, and I'm a programmer. I'm a software engineer who is obsessed with programming languages, and I've been working on creating a new programming language for my own uh, for over two years now, I guess. Um, I thought to myself that it might be a good idea to start a video uh, screencast series on the topic because um, it's really interesting and you can find really uh, enough information about this kind of stuff uh, on the internet, especially around LLVM and MLIR. There's great documentation around them, but I still like, you need to read a lot of source code, you need to do your own research, and it's not an easy job uh, to do. So here I am recording my very first episode on the topic. And today on this video, on this episode, uh, I'm going to just talk about our plan um, for the rest of the series uh, and a little bit of history about the programming language I'm working on for the past two years. So let's begin with uh, what basically what we're going to do and what is this video series all about. Hopefully in the rest of the series, we're going to create a new program language, which um, I already made most of it, uh, so I'm going to showcase it for you, and we're going to talk about like di different sections and different parts of uh, this new programming language. One of my actual goals, uh, besides creating a programming language, is to create like for this video series to be a guide for any contributor who might be interested in uh, contributing to this programming language which the name is serene uh, serene lang um another goal is to for this video series to be as a like a tutorial or a guide for whoever is interested in llvm and mlir which is like a subsection of LLVM. Uh, there's some really good documentation uh, on LLVM website uh, about LLVM and MLIR. There's like even a tutorial for both to create a, like a really simple lang language. But that being said, that doesn't mean that by reading that tutorial, you would get and you would understand everything. You still need to study hard you, you need to read a lot of source code because like even with the extent of documentation which is available on llvm.org uh it's it's really huge and you have to dig in like ask questions in different communities read a lot of source code and there's no clear path on how to like utilize llvm to, like to the fullest so um Hopefully, I'm aiming to create this video series to be like a guide through, like for everyone through LLVM and MLIR. But, um, sorry. So, if we want to, like, for the rest of the video series, um, the plan is to, I'm not going to live code anything, so, I'm going to go on my own, write some stuff, uh, like try to figure out things and uh, come up with a solution to some of the problems uh, problems I'm facing. And then when I reach to a certain milestone, I'm going to record a video describing what I, what I did and hopefully it would be a guide to that section. For example, the next, uh, my plan for the next episode is to talk about the build system and start by probably the reader part of the language, but uh, we'll get to that later. So um, today is the 2nd of July in 2021. So what I'm going to do 
for each episode is to create a branch in that moment in time for that specific episode. So uh, the master branch like will do its thing, its own thing. For anyone who watch this uh, uh, is watching this video in the future, you have to refer to the branch for each episode to find out like the stuff that I'm, I'm going to talk about. So uh, the, and uh, my plan is to keep the branches around for a long time uh, to match the videos and each episode. Uh, also, uh, I can't really refer to myself as an expert. I'm, I'm no expert. I'm just someone who's obsessed with these topics. And I, I'm really into like language design and stuff like that. So I do my own research. I do my own study. But if you find something that uh, you like, picked, uh, if it picked your interest, please feel free, feel free to contribute to the uh, to Serene. I would be more than happy uh, to review your uh, contribution. Um, to continue, oh, not again, sorry. Let me give you a, like a brief history about uh, the language itself, uh, which we're going to have a look uh, in the next, next episode. So for the past two years, I've been working on creating a new language, which, which is a, a list basically. Uh, I started really simple. I I like did many implementation in different languages. I started with Java, and um, I created like a really simple list interpreter, which really was easy to implement, and it, it worked just as I expected. Just to gain more experience about like what do I need to do, how the reader would like look like or what would be the challenges in designing a language. I started really simple by creating uh, an interpreter rather than a compiler, but little by little when I implemented like new stuff in like different implementations I had, I realized that, okay, uh, having an interpreter might be cool, might be, might be good or even handy, but it's not going to be very different than other dialect of Lisp or other uh, like scripting languages like Python or other stuff. Uh, and to be and to be frank, like whatever I create as an interpreter is not going to be able to compete with something like Ruby or Python because they have more than 20, 25 years of experience beside them to behind them to support them. So little by little, I decided to do more research on different topics like the type system, the uh, different, um, sorry, about the type system and different aspects of a language. And uh, I like, I used my research, the result and the fruit of my research to implement new, like different implementation using different languages to find out, to find like, what platform can be a good uh, platform for the language I'm working on. So obviously the first one was the JVM. It worked fine, but uh, not really great. I moved to uh, using GraalVM with Truffle library. I worked on it a little bit, which it's, it seems really promising. I have a blog post about it in my uh, web blog about the whole research I've, uh, I've done for picking, like a choosing a good uh, platform. And like, I even implemented a, another interpreter for bootstrapping a compiler in Golang. But uh, when I got introduced to LLVM and especially MLIR, it changed everything. LLVM is so elegant and like well-designed that it simply overshone, uh, like, took my breath. Like I had no other, like when I saw uh, MLIR especially, I, I was like, okay, I don't need anything else. This is the one, it's the best, let's do it. Uh, probably in 
future episodes I'm, I'm going to talk about LLVM and MLIR uh, more in depth and why they're uh, why I made this decision why LLVM is like the best but for now uh, to be really like brief LLVM is good because it's modular and it designed as a library as a framework to help you create your own compiler um, it's uh, the main language for LLVM is C++ uh, so obviously we need to have you need to know C++ to some extent I'm not a C++, uh, C++ expert myself but we're going to use it anyway because the API of uh, LLVM is in C++ uh, and we need to know a little bit uh, of how to use CMake, the build system, which is uh, quite easy. You don't have to be, you don't have to be worried about it. So the main code exists in a uh, repository on devheroes.code. I want to show you. We have like two main repositories. Uh, this setting simple is the Java implementation, which I did like long ago. I, I made some tweaks here and there, but the... Uh, the majority of the code is done like uh, long ago. Um, there's no branch on it. And the second and the most important repository is Serene itself, which contains many different branches. I, I kept the other implementation I've done on Serene uh, on different branches, just, I don't know, as a, like a historic thing. I, I like to have them around, like the Golang implementation, the first try on C++ implementation. Uh, there should be a Rust somewhere around here. Yeah, the Rust implementation. Um, overall, um, up until now, uh, I've created enough of infrastructure for the language, which contains a reader, a semantic analyzer, and uh, several layers of intermediate representation languages, which we're going to talk about in like in depth uh, in uh, future episodes. But um, right now, my aim, like, it's not, it doesn't have any specific feature at the moment. The type system is missing. Like, it only understands uh, the only thing that it can compiles is functions and integers. But my aim is to wire up every single piece of functionality in the compiler to it, like together, be able to com like compile a certain file from reading the file to generating the actual binary from a start to end, and also create a just-in-time compiler. So overall, I want the MVP of a compiler. You know, like the most valuable product no sorry <laughs> i want something really minimal it just works but it's going to give me enough insight into different pieces so i won't over engineer any piece or spend too much time on on a section which i might have to change in the future which which honestly happened to me many times so uh right now second of july i'm in that state but it's good enough that we can start talking about the reader, the semantic analyzer, different classes we have in uh, in the source code. Also, uh, that's it. But if uh, if you're interested in helping out, please reach out to me. Um, I'm going to share my um, info with you as well. So my website is xmr.com and like my email address is again Alex here you know dot org why not um oh my god so um, please reach out to me also if you uh, if you are interested in uh, this topic and especially if you want to keep updated with the 
new episodes please subscribe to this channel um hope to see you in the next episode thank you